What's poppin and welcome back to another episode of Fletcher the Fisherman guys and today I am on the same mission that I'm always on and that is to catch a monster bass. These fish have been avoiding me like you will not believe. Everyone I've been fishing with has been catching them except me. I've had my chances, I've had two really solid chances, I'd say actually three solid chances at catching a good sized bass, one over five pounds, but my luck just has not panned out. So I took Noah and Bradley fishing, both of them hooked a hog, and then I took my dad fishing and he caught two monsters back to back. A seven, it was like, what was it? It was a 612 and like a 713 I believe, so basically a seven and an eight pounder, which is just mind boggling and back to back cast. So I've been locked onto these fish and I've been putting everyone who's been fishing with me on the fish. So today I am trying to change that just desperately. I'm just so freaking frustrated at this point. I really want to get my hands on a big old large jaw, big old Karen, and that is what I plan to do today. I have these fish really figured out in here, at least I think I do. Uh, the weather kind of changed a little bit last night. We had some pretty big rainfall and all that stuff, so that could have changed things up a little bit. But for the most part, I think I got these fish figured out. So I'm gonna go ahead, hop in my boat, show y'all what I got rigged up, kind of explain to y'all what I'm gonna be doing to try to catch these big fish. I'll definitely smack some nice ones along the way, probably some twos, threes, maybe a four, and then hopefully, just maybe, we might get that giant. But let's go ahead and hop in the boat, and I'll show y'all exactly what I got going on. Here we go. I know, guys, recently, I've been making just like a lot of strictly fishing content. I haven't really been doing any challenges or crazy baits or anything like that. I've really just been going out and doing some hardcore bass fishing and trying to do a little bit more informative fishing as well, kind of explaining a little bit more what I've been doing, whether I've been fishing from the boat, from the bank, or just whatever it's been. And y'all have been seeming to really enjoy it. Views have been up quite a bit. I've had a lot of really good feedback. So if there's anything specific that y'all wanna see me film or talk about or do, whatever it might be, let me know down in the comment section below what you'd like to see. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get to fishing. That is what y'all are here for anyways. But basically, this is gonna be my bread and butter. It's been my bread and butter. For the last few days these fish have been really holding structure tight especially deep structure so bridges docks some deep areas that have some structure on the bottom that i've been able to find i've already explained it in a few videos but the reason i'm using this black and blue is because this water is pretty stained right now it's got a dead algae bloom in it or one that's almost gone but it's still pretty stained up right now so you want to use something in this water that has a lot of contrast so these fish can find it and eat it and that's exactly what this dark bait does it has a lot of dark contrast and on top of that, it's also a pretty big bait for our soft plastic goes. This or a big black and blue jig would be perfect. Just dragging this thing on the bottom puts off a lot of commotion just because it's a bigger bait. Makes it easier for those fish to find it and eat it, especially those big boys. So that's gonna be my bread and butter. But besides that, I got a few things rigged on. I got a lipless crankbait. I got a medium diving crankbait, both of those just in a shad pattern because the main forge in here is shad. Also got a yellow spinner bait and a top water. And that top water has been money for some big bites as well. So I'm probably gonna throw all these a little bit today. Might switch it up, might tie some other things on. We're just gonna have to feel these fish out, see what's going on, but it is time to get this bait in the water. So I'm gonna go ahead, cast around this little dock over here to get started and see what we got going on. You know, I'm gonna put that net rigged and ready to go right there, just in case, just in case we have a big fish come along today. This tree hasn't been here, so I'm gonna skip right up against it. Uh, that was a really bad cast, but I'm gonna get back in there after that. Mm, gosh, oh guys, guys, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. I don't know how good a hook set I got on him. He came, oh! Yes, 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 holy smokes, right on that tree, right on that tree. Oh my goodness, guys. I don't know how well this fish is hooked. He came right at me, but we're gonna try to get him in. He's probably at least four and a half, five pounds. Oh, I haven't got a great look at him yet. Oh, stay down, baby, stay down, stay down, stay down. Goodness gracious, she took off. Goodness gracious, come here, come here, come here. Yes! <laughs> That is what I'm talking about, guys. First fish of the morning. This is fish is probably 
five all day. Holy smokes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yes, that is a fat chunky bass right there. That tree right there, guys, has fallen down sometime recently. And what happens when a tree falls into the water or whether someone drags and puts a tree in the water is over time, the fish really, really get on it as that tree sits in the water for longer and longer. There's a window of time, I can't remember what it is like off the top of my head, but it's like a few weeks after it falls in, the fish really get up on it. And as you can tell right there, that fish hammered that sucker. Holy smokes. So I'm glad to know that there's some fish up on that. There could be another one. Let me get this sucker off and weigh him. Oh, yes, sir. That's got me amped up, guys. I've been really wanting a quality fish, and that is a quality one right there by all means. Well, my scale is saying low battery, so I don't think I'm going to be able to put this beautiful old gorgeous bass on the scale but i promise you guys that fish is right in that five pound range high fours at the least maybe even like five and a half that's a chunky one. <laughs> oh, that's got me so amped up yes what a great way to start the morning this could end up being an epic day that is a great way to start yes sir oh swim for me oh there she goes there she goes she was a little bit stunned <laughs> oh yes man yes that fish annihilated this thing man I, I tell you what when I set that hook and I felt that fish I thought I might have like an eight plus pounder that fish was one of the hardest fighting five pounders I have ever caught let's get right back in there though that was more like the cast I was trying to have but hey I'll, I'll take the five pounder on the bad one rolling up on my next spot right here and this little corner back here for some reason has always held fish. Noah missed a really good one back here the other day and so did Bradley. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this back there and see what happens. I might need to throw top water, but I'm gonna throw this in here first just to not disturb anything. See, oh, oh, I snapped, I snapped. Did I snap? Nope, no, my, my bait got taken off. He was back there. Sure enough, that sucker was back there. Slurp my bait right off. Let's get it right back in there. Got a little rain coming in here. What the heck? Are you kidding me? He stole my bait again. Here comes the rain, I'm about to get wet. So I found myself a little makeshift spot to kind of hide out from the rain for a little bit. I'm still getting wet, but it's better than being straight out in the thick of it. I normally would fish in the rain. It really doesn't bother me too much personally, but I got all my camera gear and stuff. So I really can't do that, unfortunately. But guys, those fish, they're right there around that corner in that pocket. I told you that they would be there. Sure enough, cast it in there, right on cue. That fish hammered it, I let him eat it, set that hook good, and just slurped my bait right off. And did it again right after that a few casts later. I think the rain is starting to pass. So I'm gonna head back out here and see if I can't get him this time. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna try to see if I can't get another bite back here. They should be here. I think he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. What? What? How are these fish getting off the hook? How are they getting off the hook? I don't understand. I do not understand. I mean, this is the most elusive fish I've ever gone after, man. Holy smokes. So we've made it to the next spot, guys. And as you can see behind me, we got this big lay down. You see these two orange buoys and there's that white buoy right there. And what that white buoy actually says is shallow. So these two orange buoys right here mark the edge of a shallow little shoal right there. And then off that shallow shoal is that big tree. And then it drops off into about like 10, 12 feet of water kind of on that other side over there. So there's a really nice ledge. And what these fish are doing is they're hanging out right on that ledge or they have been at least. So I'm gonna try doing a few things fishing around this, but I do wanna take a second to quickly talk about what's going on with the weather. I came out here expecting it to be blazing hot like it has been the last few days. But as you can tell, it's still sprinkling around me. The clouds over here 
are as dark as they can be, or I wouldn't say as dark as they can be, but they're blocking out the sun. You get the point. So what that means for fishing is these fish are going to start the roam. With that sun super high in the sky, they are trying to get out of the heat the best they can. So they're tucking up under shade lines, specifically docks, and then they're also going deep and getting on that deep structure. So they're really holding on to that tight. So that was the bite that I had planned for. But now that the weather has actually changed, guys, I'm probably going to have to start making some adjustments. I'm not going to make them too quick. That rainstorm only lasted about 25 minutes or so so the clouds haven't been up there super long so these fish might not start moving quite yet but believe me guys if these clouds stay up these fish are definitely going to start to roam and I'm going to have to make some adjustments so if it comes down to that I'll definitely explain to y'all exactly what I'm going to be doing but I'm going to go ahead and get started fishing this little area see if I can't pull anything up I'm going to probably throw a top water across this flat do some yo-yoing with the lipless over here might throw the creature bait a little bit see if I can't pull anything off of that and hopefully find out if there's any fish hanging out around this area so I'm gonna go ahead and put this camera down and get to it oh there's one <laughs> look at that yo-yo in that lipless crankbait right on that ledge guys what did I tell you about? Right where those buoys are, hanging out right up against it. And that is a good one, guys. Not as good as the first one, but a respectable fish. Nevertheless, probably like a three-ish pounder. Oh, I don't know how well he's hooked. He's just hooked right there in the corner of the mouth. But I'm going to go ahead and swing him in. There we go. Oh, yes, guys. Yes. Make my life a little bit easier with these treble hooks. Grab them with the grippers right here. I know some of y'all will roast me for that, but hey, I'm gonna save myself some trouble, make my life a lot easier, make it easier on the fish, so I don't see a problem with it. But that is a good fish right there. Probably, huh, I wish I had the scale, man, but um, I'd say this fish is in that high two range, maybe not quite three, but sitting there right on that drop off, just like I told you guys, hanging out right on the other side of those buoys, that's right where it drops off. And sure enough, he smoked that lip list with me yo-yoing it right there on that ledge. Let's go ahead and drop this girl back in. Let her go on to get nice, big and healthy. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know what happened there, but there she goes. <laughs> yes, sir. Put that lip list up for a bit and let me find a place to put it. We'll put it right here and grab this top water right here and throw this sucker across this flat see if there's anything up on this thing i doubt it but it's worth a shot there's a, a few little pieces of structure right next to that shallow buoy sign and they tend to be on that if they're on this well no luck there on the top water that's pretty much what i figured so i'm gonna go ahead and move spots and keep it moving i'm gonna switch back over to this crawl right here Go fish the back side of this island. There's a really steep drop off on the back side of this island, starting more towards that way, but I'm gonna fish up to it just so I don't miss an opportunity if there is some more fish a little bit farther down in the shallow end. But they really like that steep drop off that's down there. On top of it just being a steep drop off, there's actually a lot of brush and stuff hanging up against it as well some timber and things like that so those fish are holding that sucker tight or at least have been I'm hoping it's the same case today oh god i got smacked right there i got freaking smacked i literally looked over my shoulder because i heard some shad splashing behind me. I missed that fish. Dang. Oh, that's unfortunate. Literally the second I looked over my shoulder, totally messed me up there. <sighs> Changing out the soft plastic just because that one got ripped up pretty dang good on that hook set right there. But that's okay. We're gonna keep it moving. There should be some more fish on this backside. Well, if you watched the video with me, Noah, and Bradley, you know this is where I missed two really good fish right here in this same spot. So we're gonna see if there's another fish hanging out in here. There it is. No! Ah, oh, gosh. That is so frustrating. Oh my gosh, I told you they were gonna be there and he thumped it. And I got a little look at him too. That was probably like a three and a half 
pounder. Ah, uh, man, oh man. I gotta work on these hook sets or something. <laughs> and I'm sticking them good too, and I'm letting them eat it. I don't know what's happening here. There we go. <laughs> I caught one that time. <laughs> Not the first fish that I hooked by any means, but another little small one. I'll take it as a consolation prize. I'd much rather have that bigger fish, but I won't complain with him, especially after missing a few. Gotta start somewhere. But one thing I wanna say, guys, that first fish that I missed, that little tiny spot right there, I cast it in there four or five times, nothing. Cast it all the way back there, finally got a really good cast that got all the way into the back. And finally, on that cast, the one that got the deepest, where he was tucked up all the way in there, as I said, bass are ambush predators, that was the one he ate. He wanted it right there in front of his face, and that's when he munched it. Unfortunately, I missed him, but hey, I'll take this one as a consolation prize, as I said. So let's go ahead and get this little guy back in. Thank you for munching. Now it's time to find us a good one. Well, I've been finding them. <laughs> I've just been missing them. Uh, that's how it goes sometimes, guys. You can do everything right and still miss them. I'm gonna take this yellow spinner bait. Let me check the drag real quick. Looks like it is good to go. And I'm gonna run it down this whole seawall down here that y'all can see, kinda, hopefully. And hopefully there's some fish kinda tucked up between these columns and they'll come out and smack this thing. Oh, yeah, yo, 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 we're on, we're on, we're on. That's a good fish. Came right off that little lay down in between these two sections of seawall. Oh, ho, ho, hammered that spinnerbait. I thought it was a stick for a second, but that's a solid, like, uh, mid two, maybe three pounder. Let's go. That's my first chomp on a spinnerbait in a minute, so that feels good to get that out of the way. That is a good fish. I think that's a three pounder all day, guys. Oh yeah, oh yeah, not the longest fish in the world, but good golly is she thick. That is a fat, healthy fish. Short and stocky, man. Those, those fish that are short and stocky like this, they will fight like crazy. They got so much power. I'm trying to get that hook out of here. God, he hammered it. There it goes. <laughs> got it right out of there, but that's probably three, three and a half at most high twos at the least, but that is a really healthy fish, guys, man. If there is gonna be a bass, that's gonna be a future Karen. This is one of them, just super healthy. Mean as can be, ambush predator. Hammer that thing. <laughs> Let's go, and if y'all are wondering what she came off of, I don't know if y'all can see this super well, but see this little tree in the water? Possibly, maybe, but it kind of goes out that way a little bit. She's sitting right on top of that, ambush that thing just like she was supposed to, and it resulted in me catching a nice little fish. Let's keep it moving. Glad to get one on the spinner bait. This is one of my favorite baits to throw, actually. I'm back where I missed those two fish. Time for some redemption. Let's see if they're in there. Oh, don't get stuck in the tree. Yeah, we go. There we go, got one. Got one. Got one, not a giant but we got a fish <laughs> back in that corner. There could be a bigger one back there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this little dinker off of here and see what else is hanging out back there. One other thing that I quickly wanna note why I got this guy on the hook right here. If you take a look at that right there, notice what hook he's hooked on right there, the trailer hook. If you guys, if you're throwing a spinner bait, you're throwing a buzz bait, throw a trailer hook on. It'll make your life a lot better, I promise you that. I can't tell you how many fish I only hook on that trailer hook. And that is a great example. I just snapped. I just snapped off. Are you f stinking kidding me? What in the world did that snap on? This is like my bad luck corner. <laughs> oh, was that a fish? I'm gonna go back here and see if I can see my spinner bait. 
Well, I definitely snapped this off on a fish. I can't believe he hasn't come up and tried to shake it yet because, I mean, that water is only like two or three feet deep right there, so I should easily be able to see where that spinnerbait is in the water, especially with those, uh, what's it called? Those blades. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the bad luck order for me. <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating. All you can do is laugh it off. I suppose I'll just have to tie on another one. Oh, he got it. There we go, there we go, there we go. He's stuck on the tree. He's stuck on the tree. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's probably like the second best one of the day right there. Oh, let me try to get him in. Yes, okay. look at that, guys. Oh, check that out. That's like a solid, probably four pounder right there. I wish I had my scale, but that is a chunk. Oh, man, these fish are munching. And look how I hooked him right there. What a weird spot to hook a bass like right there on the tongue that's always interesting oh got it out and there we go guys man it's not a very long fish but good gracious look how fat he is that is another future karen man these fish in here are just so stinking healthy there you go baby i'm gonna go ahead and let you go here oh uh, there she goes she's tightening down <laughs> Yes. Well, I think I'm going to end on that one, guys, as some final redemption for the few fish that I did miss today. I really don't know what was going on. I was setting that hook good and letting them eat it, so, I mean, your best guess is mine. But hopefully y'all enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to go the extra mile, hit that notification bell as well. But as always, fasten is a passion. Peace out.